Hi, I'm Georgia Japan, and thanks so much for the support on the previous Wednesday's Downtown video. As promised, here's more information about the show. Here's how the format will go. I'll introduce the theory, provide necessary background information and context, um, summarize the theory and the results and findings, and then give my thoughts on the theory. If that sounds good to you, please leave a like or comment, and I'll get to work on another episode. So without further ado, let's get to our first theory. Got my translation notes again. First theory. Matsumoto is so buff he could pass for a masked Mexican wrestler without the audience noticing him. Yeah, Matsumoto started to become noticeably more muscular around 2009. There are rumors about his reasons, ranging from he just wants to look cool, to weird ones like, he was influenced by Biohazard 5. No, seriously, that was on his wide show. Personally, I believe the reason he's stated in interviews, he wants to protect his family. Matsumoto got married in 2009. Comparing photos, we can see noticeable gains. After his daughter was born, he got even larger. As a family man, I can understand this. Okay, now on to the summary. First, Matsumoto picked a mask. He ended up selecting the chicken mask and went by the name El Chicken Rice. If you're wondering why they picked El Chicken Rice, well, Chicken Rice is an obscure reference to the 2004 song of the same name, which Matsumoto wrote the lyrics for. Since he's supposed to be a Mexican wrestler, he has to speak Spanish. He was taught a single Spanish word, cabrón. This was the only word he said during the experiment. He joined a group of wrestlers for an actual match. Matsumoto was introduced as El Chicken Rice, a new wrestler from Mexico. Matsumoto observed the match from ringside, assisting his teammates and ad-libbing an attack. He gave a very convincing performance and even managed to pull off some jokes without anyone noticing. After the match, he was brought up ringside, which was the point some audience members began to question if he couldn't speak Japanese since he seemed to understand it perfectly. The match ended without incident, and staff went to interview the audience about El Chicken Rice. And no one realized he was Matsumoto. The general opinion was that El Chicken Rice was a talented new wrestler that'll go far, though many thought he was actually Japanese, or at least part Japanese. Results. Yes, Matsumoto is so buff he can pass for a wrestler. Second theory. Takeshi isn't really trying to help his apprentices. Okay, I'm gonna have to give some additional information. New comedians often seek to work under master comedians to help get their foot in the door of showbiz. They learn the ropes from their master, but before they do that, the master usually gives the comedian a new stage name, with the hopes that they'll become successful. Master comedians often put a lot of thought and consideration when naming their apprentices. But Takeshi is known to come up with names on the spot, many of them being very questionable in quality. He's also been known to change the names of apprentices on a whim. Unknown to the presenters, their master had been watching and stormed the set. Probably earlier than expected. The two most interesting stories for me were about how he continuously named this comedian ripoffs of famous comedians. There's some examples. And this other comedian, who he named Shepard Tato, because one of his duties is to look after Takeshi's dog. At the end, Takeshi was asked to give a new name to this comedian. The show plans to follow up on this comedian later. Results. Pending. It depends if this name change was actually a success or not. I can't remember the last time I saw Downtown and Takeshi together, but it was awesome. I always wondered about how the seniority system would affect Downtown but they seemed very unfazed. Third theory. <laughs> Talents shouldn't publish books. The premise here is that having a written log of their statements will come back to bite them. Various examples were then shown, from Talents who lost weight and rebounded, and lost weight again, one book about the happiness of being overweight, then how to lose weight, how to make money, to give me back my money. The two most interesting examples presented for me were Shinagawa's mother's book and Matsumoto's book. First, Shinagawa. I didn't know his mother was famous. Anyway, her book is a factual memoir of an affair she had with a man in Thailand. And the contents get really steamy. 
Shinigawa said he knew his mom had written a book, but didn't know the contents until this guy told him about it on Variety TV. Utterly mortified, he said it was the only time he had actually had a red face on TV. Matsumoto had made some very bold statements in his younger years. I'm um, kind of paraphrasing from memory right now, but why would anyone want to have a kid? They're like having a mini version of yourself running around the house. This anti-smoking fad needs to stop. I'm never giving up smoking. Matsumoto has given up smoking. He doesn't even like the smell of it anymore. Movies are too big. The screens, the budget. No, I'd never make a film. Weak looking comedians are funnier. They use such strong language. That gap between what they say and their physique. That's funny. Result. Talents who publish books may be teased about what they write in the future. At first I thought this theory would be too specialized. But gosh, did they find some hilarious hypocrisies. Putting them together like that was like a comic panel. And Shinigawa's story, oh lordy. I don't even want to imagine how awkward it was once he knew that fact. Fourth theory. An American FBI agent would be able to predict the answer to a true or false quiz without understanding Japanese. Okay, I'm gonna have to give some context here. This true or false quiz is called a Marubatsu quiz and it's a common quiz type on TV. The specific quiz they're referring to is like, um, is like this. What I'm guessing is that an FBI agent would be able to read the announcer's facial expressions and tones to detect the statements which were false. A very ambitious theory, since this would require cooperation from the US government. The show called a US government official and was quickly blown off. The staff was forced to change the theory. They got a pretty famous foreign psychic to fly to Japan. Before conducting the test, they checked his psychic power by facing him off against the famous Japanese magician, Trump Man. The psychic saw through his illusion and successfully picked the right card, which caused Trump Man to grimace. Then they went on to the Marubatsu quiz. After two successful jumps, the show's staff grew suspicious that someone was telling him the answers. After an inspection of all the crew, and after checking the replays, they found a possible culprit. His translator. Feeling they had got him, they told the translator to wait in a spot off camera. After, he still got the right answer. Downtown staff now moved to their final question. This time, both roads leaded to mud. After a long deliberation, he said that he couldn't see a blue mat, and asked if the show had made two pits. Completely shocking downtown staff. It seemed he had won, but gosh, do I love downtown staff. After closing up the video, they were leading him to his van and had placed a pitfall trap. <laughs> After he fell in, the show's staff asked why he didn't see it coming. A fantastic finale. Result. Yes, a psychic can predict the answer without knowing the language, but they cannot foresee pitfall traps without concentrating. This is the kind of stuff that makes me love variety. The obscurity, the randomness, and the grandeur of this theory are all prime examples of what makes Japanese TV wonderful. And I loved how determined the staff was to get this guy muddy. Well, that's about all I got for now. If you want to hear me talk more about Wednesday's Downtown, please leave a like and a comment. Share it with someone who likes variety. I'd love to see this show grow in popularity, especially overseas. Anyway, until next time, have a glorious day.